Okay, now that we have our management data warehouse set up, we can go ahead and configure the actual data collection. So to do so, we'll right click data collection, choose tasks, and choose configure data collection. And on the wizard page, we'll just click on next, and we'll connect to our local instance. And if you recall from the previous demonstration, before we had set up the management data warehouse, there was nothing available under the database name. Now that we have done so, we hit the drop down, and sure enough, there is our management data warehouse. Now, the cache directory is optional. You can see it tells us here enter where you want to cache collected data locally before it is uploaded to the management data warehouse. That's up to you in terms of which directory, but you can see a blank value uses the temp directory. So if you're fine with that, that's perfectly acceptable. If you would care to relocate your cache to a faster disk subsystem, that's perfectly fine as well. I'll just leave it blank. And uh, in terms of the data collector sets that you want to enable, when you are just getting started, this is the only one available by default, your system data collection sets. Now you can create your own, but that's a bit beyond the scope of what we can cover at this point. But you can do a little bit of research on creating custom data collection sets. You can use T-SQL statements or you can even use SQL Server Profiler uh, to effectively convert a trace into a, a data collection set. But these are fairly robust and uh, perfectly fine to use at this point. So we'll just go ahead and click on Next. And that's all there is. That's the uh, final page. So we'll click on Finish. And this will go ahead and uh, configure those and enable them. And uh, this won't take very long, and we'll see end result momentarily here. So there we go. That has completed, so we can close this. And now you see the data collection has started. The little red arrow is gone. And if we expand, we do see now system data collection sets. And if we expand that, by default, the system data collection sets collects disk usage, query statistics, and server activity. Now you can see there's also this utility information, which is disabled by default, but you can right click on any one of these and start or stop any of them at any time. And you can collect all the information that has been gathered and upload it manually uh, right now by choosing this option, or you can just wait until the, uh, the schedule occurs and we'll see that in a moment as well. But you can right click and choose properties on any one of them and see how it's configured by default. So in terms of the collection and upload, you can see here non-cached is uh, set by default and it is scheduled also by default every six hours. Now you can choose a new schedule if you want to, or you can just go with cached, collect and cache the data with data uploaded on a separate schedule. Again, that is your call. And the collection items include disk usage for data and log files. And you can see the frequency and you know you can change these as well if uh, if you want to the uh, run as by default is using the sql server agent service account again you can change that if you want that's usually fine and the retention entirely your call but uh, that is a, a reasonable amount uh, 730 days that's two years worth of information so if you don't feel that's quite necessary you can go ahead and reduce it to save a little space or if you want more than that, you can retain it indefinitely. So those are just some of the basic properties. And you can see those uh, for any one of these. You can right-click and just choose properties and see effectively what is configured for each, uh, each option. Query statistics, you can see the retention is only 14 days because it assumes there's an awful lot of queries happening. So it doesn't retain it for nearly as long. But again, you can set any value you want and configure anything in here. So it's just a matter of uh, enabling each given uh, collection set at whatever time and letting them run for however long uh, you deem necessary. When these are running, they are gathering that information and they are sending it to the management data warehouse. So uh, you can see what is actually happening by going to your databases and expanding the MDW and looking at the tables that are created. So you can see uh, quite a few tables have been generated uh, for this information. And of course, you can query any one of these. So if I just uh, create a new query here quickly, uh, let's do select star from, and 
doesn't matter really any one of these. Let's uh, let's look at some of the query stats. So we'll just drag that in and execute this. And wrong database, my mistake. Try that again. And there we have our statistical information that has been gathered. So again, you can see all of this information is going in and it's being stored. So we can query this whenever we want. And of course, we can filter which columns we're most interested in. Various types of queries that, uh, again, we aren't concerned with. But already, you can see a fair amount of information has been gathered. Now, this information is here because I did go ahead and create these earlier. Then I just undid everything and did it all again. So you might not see this much information uh, when you first enable yours. But there is an awful lot of information that is gathered, even with just those default collection sets. And then as mentioned, you can create your own custom collection sets if desired. And uh, you'll see those show up and you can enable those and control entirely what is being gathered. But ultimately, that is how you go about configuring a data collection set and the management data warehouse.